Hello folks, my name's Dan Wheeler. I'm here um, working with Turning Point School of Art um, to support you guys in a little photo project focusing on photographing nature. Um, so I'm going to give you guys a few little tasks to think about. Um, you don't need to worry about having any specific equipment. If you have anything that you can make a picture on, that's great. You can use your phone, you can use a camera. I don't mind what you use, um, as long as you're having fun making pictures and exploring the world. So um, what I'm going to do is give you guys four tasks, okay? Um, and I'm going to illustrate those tasks by showing you some examples and then I'll show you a photograph that I've made on my mobile phone um, as an example. And I'd like you guys to make your own work. You can either copy me, you can only make four pictures if you want to, or you can make more. It really doesn't matter as long as you're having fun and making photographs. So, the first thing I'd like you to think about is filling the frame. Okay, so when we look um, through our phone or through our viewfinder on our camera, we have our frame. And what I'd like you to do is think about filling it with nature and getting in close. Okay, so the first pictures I'm going to show you are by Imogen Cunningham, a favourite photographer of mine. She's amazing. And what she's brilliant at is filling the frame. So here we have some lovely examples of her work. Hopefully you can see all that. Notice how she's really got in close and the plants that she's photographed are totally filling our frame and going beyond it as well. You know our leaves are reaching out beyond the frame here. These are very simple. I think that's celery actually. So we can make these really interesting photographs with things that we find around the house. If you like celery, that is. Um, got some more examples here. This looks like a cactus that you might have on your windowsill. Beautiful, huh? So that is Imogen Cunningham. And for our first task, we're thinking about filling the frame. Okay. For our second task, I'd like to, us to think about distorting the and what I want to do is think about photographing through things. So maybe we have a greenhouse in a back garden, or we have a plant in a window, and we can photograph it from the outside of the house instead of the inside of the house. So what I'm going to show you is some work by Faye Godwin, wonderful photographer. And her pictures, as we can see, are made through glass in some instances. In other instances, there are things suspended in the trees which distort our frame and make things look a bit more surreal. So maybe if you have a tree in the garden, you could hang a scarf in it or something and photograph that within nature. Here we have a sunflower head wrapped in netting. It's probably to stop the birds eating the seeds, I should imagine. Okay. So I want you to think about distorting the frame, okay? Bringing other objects in that might create a more abstract, an interesting picture. Okay. Our next thing is to think about including people made objects in our pictures of the landscape. So what you might notice if you look outside, I mean at the moment I can see trees but I can also see giant um, office buildings, there's Nottingham train station nearby. So although I have nature around me, it's also very obvious that we have affected that landscape. We live within it. And sometimes that's really hard to avoid. So the photographs I'm going to show you next are by the photographer Robert Adams. OK, 
His pictures show the landscape, but do you see how we have these telegraph lines across the middle? So we have this lovely photograph of an American plane, but then we have these telegraph lines reaching across it to remind us that we are present within the landscape as well. In this one we have more telegraph lines and some signs as well, so if we remove these we'd have quite a beautiful, simple landscape, but because they're in there, it reminds us that humans affect the landscape too. Right to the point where we are building houses within it. Okay, so what I want you to do is maybe go for a little walk, whether or not that's in the city or in the countryside or somewhere in between, in suburbia. And I want you to think about our effect on nature. It's quite important. How do we affect the environment that we live in? So I want you to think about including person-made or people-made objects within our environment. Okay. The last fourth thing I want you to think about, or the last fourth task, is thinking about layers. Okay. So we want to think about what's in the foreground, in the middle and what's in the background okay and we can use this to make really interesting photographs some of these people that I've already shown you have done that um, but there's some really good examples in this giant book by Lee Friedlander okay so I'm going to open this to any page <laughs> and I can show you that these are very complicated pictures but do you see that there's mountains in the background and we have our trees in the foreground, and it makes these quite abstract photographs. Again, we have here a river in the foreground and these plants, but then in the background we also have the mountains. Really interesting way of making pictures. Here's a really good couple of examples where we have these branches almost framing the mountains in the background. Okay, so maybe we think a little about our foreground and our background and how they interact with each other. You know, sometimes you can line, <laughs> how do I do this, the foreground thing up with the person in the background, person, nature in background. So just think about that relationship between the two things. Okay? Beautiful. Okay, so try and be a little abstract what you do. Okay, so to just run through that again, I want you to think about filling the frame, distorting the frame by bringing, bringing things in, maybe photographing through glass or other objects. I want you to, for the third task, include people made objects. So show our effect on the landscape. Maybe you're walking through a park and you see a bin within a bunch of hedges. Maybe you photograph that bin with the hedges to show our effect on the landscape. The other thing I want you to think about is layers. So what's in the foreground and what's in the background and how they interact with each other. Okay. I'm going to make a worksheet for this as well. So if you need any more information, it will be on there. And I'm also going to show you some examples of four pictures I've made to illustrate what I'd like you to do for those four tasks. OK, good luck. Hope it goes well. And I'll see you at our session um, very soon. OK, take care, guys. Good luck.